All right, I'll give Alex a chance to finish typing in this first uh, agenda item. And then whenever you're ready, uh, feel free to go ahead and get started with that one, Alex. Okay, cool. I'll just paste the CDIPR and I'll start. So I am ready. All right. So uh, I started uh, investigating this uh, OM in, in one of the Qbert CI lanes at the Qbert repo. And it looked just like, uh, just like the QMU image convert. It's the process that uh, overwhelms the memory and gets OM. So uh, with a deeper dive, I was able to replicate it locally uh, on the latest um, kernel and uh, just the latest Qbert CI. So um started digging because I thought it, was, it wasn't it was really possible with Cgroups v2. I thought it would always throttle instead of uh, killing. But apparently Kubernetes is still not doing, uh, still not capitalizing on that. It's still uh, not using the Cgroups v2 functionality. It's uh, hidden behind a kubelet feature gate called uh, memory QoS. And that is alpha, I think, even in 129. So that means, uh, yeah, it's, oh, be in alpha for for a while so i um uh, i mean i enabled this feature gate and i confirmed that is what stops the om killing and i guess we are indeed vulnerable to that today since we use uh, since we use cache write back which uses the page cache and if some if the stars align you could just overwhelm the page cache and get OM killed. And it's normally a loop. So if you hit it once, you'll hit it for a couple more restarts and uh, it'll only converge after a while. So uh, not a positive thing. Um, there's also a bugzilla somewhere uh, on the PR that talks about the same thing, but in the Cgroups v1 context since a lot of our supported versions are still on, not even on Cgroups v2. Uh, they get bundled with uh, with um, with Rail and old CentOS so, and whatnot. So you could still, uh, in the wild, you would see a lot of machines running CDI that have uh, no Cgroups v2 by default. So that's mm -hmm. still a thing. So, uh, I propose, I'm proposing this PR here, uh, if you want to pop it open. That is uh, basically doing uh, something very simple. It's uh, defaulting to cache equals none if the target, if the destination supports it. So if the target file system uh, supports all direct semantics, then that's fine. We'll go ahead with uh, cache none. And if not, we will uh, stick to the current behavior, which is cache write back as a fallback. Um, so one example of, of a target that doesn't support odirect is uh, tempfs. I think that's the most uh, known one, but there are more. There's a whole list. Uh, I can have to dig it out, but mm -hmm. the gist of it is that we have to stay compatible. Yeah, um, I think uh, my concern is that uh, I, I'm pretty sure NFS is also does not support direct, and that and the and and the issue where we see this is on the NFS uh, and convert. 
Mm -hmm. I'm not sure NFS uh, has issued the O direct. Let me check. I I don't see how it would be possible to do O direct on NFS, but. I think the other concern that I had about this, because uh, we tried to do it in the past, and um, it can have a pretty severe performance impact, um, because the the IO is getting written out in extremely small chunks, and so like I think we were getting complaints when we tried to switch this on, and all of a sudden uh, imports were taking like an hour instead of five minutes or something like that. It was just like a really significant uh, performance drop. So I also worry about that. Yeah, the, that was the, um, that was the cycle where we opted for right back instead of none. Do we know, do we know how long it's expected before this feature gate becomes the norm? Because I mean, I think one thing I would say is we've been living with this problematic behavior for since the dawn of time, basically, and it has bothered us a few times. It's bothering CI currently, but we haven't seen, have we, I guess I would say, have we seen a lot of complaints from like actual environments in the wild where this is happening. And I guess it's probably going to happen more in like severely resource constrained or like quota, uh, you know, type, type of environments. Uh, but I'm just kind of wondering, balancing that performance trade off with the actual impacts that this is going to have versus just waiting for um the c groups v2 feature to come to the rescue which to me is the right like when that's in place we want right back anyway so are we going to have to switch it back yeah yeah that's true um also we have a knob where we can just increase the memory available to the importer pod so it, it just basically makes it harder to run out of memory yeah. And what's that knob? Is that like a is that a uh, public AP like a is that plumbed yeah. all the way up to the hyperconverged? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's true. That's what. Uh, that's how we solved it. That's how we alleviated at least uh, the issue in in the Qvert repo. We just bumped the uh, limits to one gig, which is not ideal, but. Um, yeah, or or our defaults are slightly too low. Although you know, in in normal operations, we never get near that. But you know, with the page cache, we do. So, are we able to detect um, that uh, an import failed due to being um killed? Uh, like, would there be a way that we could, for example, then create a, an event and a corresponding alert that says that this is happening and the mitigation could be spelled out in a run book that you could adjust this API to fix it. So like basically providing the 360 degree coverage of this for people to see it and fix it. Yeah, I think so, but we could do it. But I think with like Windows images or even rel like you you couldn't physically suggest it to people to have limits as big as that um yeah windows mainly windows images big images you you'd be saying to people uh, hey just uh, pop your limits up to 15 gigs or something but you're saying that it does after a couple of cycles complete so the real the real um resident set size of this importer is not so high as the full image. It's just higher than what we currently have set because it sounds like maybe after three times, it's like, I'm wondering if the page cache accounting is a bit uh, loose. And so if a previous, like it's not great, but like if a previous importer caused this uh, IO to be in, or these pages to be in the page cache, and then a subsequent importer is able to use those pages without being charged for them, but then also bring its own new pages in. That's the only way I could think of that it eventually converges. 
Um, I don't know, but I'm <clears throat> doing a bit of guessing there as to why it would eventually work. It's not great for sure, to be honest. Like, yeah, we, if the, the run book says, yeah, just increase your memory by a bit and then try again, like it's not, but unfortunately like the real fix is, is coming in Kubernetes. And I think we could also like uh, poke on this a little bit. It would probably be a good idea to um, like let people know that this is important for the, for our use case in particular. maybe accelerated yeah. being turned on uh, by default. Yeah, uh, it looks like it's not going to make it to 29. So there's a, at least a while until it's beta. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, I, to be honest, I'm also not 100% uh, ready to switch to none, but I feel like we have to have this PR at least as a reference if, if I don't know, if some big install hits this or something like that. Um, and actually, uh, you said this uh, might happen in resource-constrained environments. I believe it's more common uh, in environments where you have a lot of RAM that's not being used. That's mm. the usual case where this replicates. Um, okay. Yeah, I suppose because you, if it's possible to grow the cache, then Linux will do that and then you'll get uh, booted out for it. But if it's not possible, then the system has no choice but to uh, to throttle uh, the IO. Yeah. I wonder, is that another approach? I was just thinking about it um, to actually have a... Uh, some artificial throttling of the of the IO just to slow it down. I mean, that's not super great either, but I'm just trying to think of other other options. Or doing the we've talked about in the past um having a QMU mode that um uses right back but um has a limit that I mean, we we it's again. You don't want the application to have to be aware of the idiosyncrasies of the Linux page cache, but um, that's the world we find ourselves in. But there was some talk about having an I/O uh, cache mode for QMU IMG that would say like uh, basically read in two hundred megabytes and then flush it before reading more. Although we're not always, I guess not all of these IO paths are going through QMU IMG either. But that's what the, I guess that's what this PR is for. Sorry, I'm, I'm a little bit uh, meandering in these in these thoughts, but like that was another uh, approach that had been suggested in the past. I, I think at some point we also suggested just allowing you to set a flag of the cache mode on the actual data volume. Uh, yeah, that's an evil API though. Yeah. Um, that we don't want to. I would be okay with maybe having a way you could like patch something, uh, or do something on an, an annotation that's not an official API. I don't know something unofficial, but <clears throat> the idea that that um somebody needs to understand this. Uh, before they could set that properly. And you can get yourself into, I guess with direct IO, you can't really get yourself into trouble. Um, but if you misuse cache modes, you certainly can. So Kubert itself has cache mode on the devices. Uh, so. It has it on what? On, on the disks. You, you can set the cache mode on the disk. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's a little scary because I don't know if people know how to use that correctly. It's a pretty advanced concept. Um, okay, so let's um, maybe, oops, maybe we should have a determination here if we can make one. Uh, is there any thoughts on what to do with this? Seems like I don't really like us changing the cache mode again. 
essentially since we're going back and forth between different cache modes based on who complains latest. So. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, same here. I'm not 100% with switching. And uh, I kind of want to know like if this is a problem with real storage, good storage, and not like the NFS CSI thing where uh, kind of pulling a host directory on the Kubernetes CI nodes and that's backed by a filer and whatnot. Like, yeah, I I'm think it's the... there's, uh, yeah. Sorry, go ahead, Alex. Um, I'm thinking there's some uh, misconfiguration there, or at least a misoptimization in that NFS CSI setup, since it's yeah. just for the sake of CI. Yeah, I think if the storage is fast enough, um, you're not going to have the IO backed up in the page cache as much anyway. It's going to be getting uh, flushed to the storage so quickly that you're not going to see an accumulation of like uh, buffered IO. So, um, and that's another consideration. Maybe for this CI, the workaround is just to increase the memory limits um, further, but then we're not actually testing the out of the box config. So, yeah, that's what we did in, in the CI. We just increased the uh, limits and that uh, alleviated the CI. The CI was like 50% red and now it's okay. green. Oh, okay. All right, so I think we should track that knob that's in the blog there, and this should be something that uh, that we follow and like encourage from a project perspective. That because it's something that we like. You did the tests, Alex, and we know it to to help. So it seems like maybe that's what we should be tracking and just understanding that until Kubernetes adopts this behavior, we can be adversely affected in certain situations. Yep, that sounds good. OK. Uh, so I'm going to add a quick note, and then um, I'll start typing on this, I guess. And Alexander, if you'd like to pop on with your topic, that would be great. Yeah, so we, we have an, an issue uh, open people asking us for an official ARM release. We, we have a periodic that on a daily basis creates ARM containers. Uh, we just don't make an actual official release. And um, a couple of days ago, somebody pinged us saying, hey, you know, any progress on this um, on the official ARM release for CDI? And Really, all we have to do is, is you know, when we make a release, is just also uh, call the other uh, builder to build the ARM release. So, you know, we just need to spend some time on it. Okay, do we have this, is the person that pinged us interested in helping with that? Or are they just asking us to do it? I think they are just asking us to do it. And there, there really isn't all that much work left. We just need to uh, modify the project infra, uh, you know, post submit uh, jobs to actually just make a release. So, and we have all the all the code for it already, since we already we actually create the containers on a nightly basis from a nightly. So. Mm. So it's not okay. like they can't they can actually use it. it. It's just there's no official release. So you know we just release one fifty eight, but there's no one fifty eight R. So. Okay, and Kubevert they're already releasing the um, multi arch things, right? So we can just kind of do what they do. Uh, that is a very good question. I think so. I'd have to double check. Okay, and this isn't an issue of testing at all because that's already being done. Um, you know, it's just a matter of the, the release mechanics. Right. Okay. Well, nothing other than release. 
mechanics. Um, and all the all the plumbing to to make the arm build is there already as well. So okay. So we need to um seems like the action would be to create like I don't know if there's an issue for it, but we could create an issue. There's, <laughs> um, there's an issue for it. I can probably find it. Okay. And then I guess it, if we're going to uh, take it on that, just that issue just needs an owner. Put the issue link up on the top of your agenda here in the parens, maybe. <clears throat> I mean, thanks. Uh, okay. I'll pop it open. Okay. So, is there anyone that wants at the, at the last comment two weeks ago? And then... Okay. Yep. Sounds good. So who uh, who would be the right is the right person here on the call um, to take this? What what worries me in this uh, in making this um, change to the post submit jobs is that we like how, how do you test this before uh, releasing? Since that can potentially mess up existing tags and stuff like that, like bad things. Uh, uh -huh. No, it, the the registry has architectures in it. So when we push it with an ARM architecture, it will have the same tag, but it's a different architecture. So they, they don't mess with each other. Mm, okay. But I wonder who's who would be consuming and testing those releases um because that, that's i think that sounds like it's a little different than i guess how we're handling the x86 releases where they're getting quite a bit of <clears throat> of love and attention is there a, is there a difference there or like uh, another thing yeah. go ahead yeah just want to say that install upgrade team they uh, 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 test it on uh, uh, aws clusters they install uh, uh, they, they get the arm 64 environment and they install openshift and cnv and uh, run the tests i don't think it's scheduled but uh, they do it from time to time Okay, so there's some downstream <clears throat> testing going on. Okay, um, so <clears throat> I guess I think what we should probably do is assign this issue to someone uh, if we want to look into it further. And then, I mean, I think that there may not be harm in just uh adding the releases and then if there needs to be further testing on that going forward uh that can be added so we should probably look into what the qbert arm lane the qbert has an arm lane that's running okay. on an actual arm machine mm -hmm. and they have to import images as well so they must be running some sort of arm version of cdi so we should probably investigate what they're doing there okay but feel free to uh, assign it to me uh, i can run it down see what, what's going on it's sort of interesting i mean they don't need cdi they there are i think um convert tests that don't require cdi so I, I'm just saying I wouldn't uh, guarantee that that there's an ARM version of CDI running in those tests. Right. Okay. Well, I, I suppose that could be using a registry or a container disk instead of uh, exactly.
but it, it might be helpful for them to have uh, an ARM version of CDI available to run non containerist tests. Mm -hmm. Sure. All right. So I think <clears throat> we might be covered on this one. Thanks for bringing it up, Alexander. Um, that brings us to the end of the formal topics list. Uh, we could take a look at the issues. Well, I, I, I have a, a, there's also somebody that wants a C390 uh, version oh. of KDI. Mm -hmm. oh, here, let me paste, the, add the link to that one. Yeah, there's uh, a lot of interest these last couple of days in uh, building the builder in CDI and mm. uh around the readme doc for uh yeah for building cdi basically like the make file and stuff a lot of activity there yeah okay yeah and and that guy is opening prs and stuff so he's, he's actively involved at this point i just want to okay. <clears throat> cool um so I don't know why, but... <laughs> So how how does can somebody uh, explain for me how the ARM uh, testing works today with those builds? Um, did somebody contribute hardware to uh, to our CI so that it could work? Um, yes. Would we need the same thing to happen for uh, this architecture? Because I assume that if it's a first class build target, then first class means it gets the same CI as well. So um, we had somebody from ARM uh, uh, do PRs to contribute a builder. Uh, and I'm assuming, or, and uh, I helped them set up the nightlies and I'm assuming they're consuming their nightlies uh, in, in their test environment. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, since that's working, we haven't had a complaint from them. So I'm assuming it's working. Okay, so we don't yeah. have actual lanes like if we submit a PR to CDI where like it runs against. No, there's no actual uh, lanes. Uh, if if we want official lanes, uh, we can probably talk with the ARM folks that because they've provided a machine for Qvert. Qvert has a mm -hmm. ARM lane, so maybe we could uh, get the same uh, access for CDI. Mm -hmm. So that, that's part of me running down uh, what to do for that. I'm gonna talk to them and see if it's maybe open to that. Yeah, I think it's a good question. Like it's maybe not necessary immediately and we may not wanna block these PRs on something like that where we could evolve into the support, um, but it is something to consider because um, it's a little difficult to, you know, like if we can, be breaking these architectures with PRs and not realizing it. And then after the fact, having to go do fix ups, that's not really a great way to run right. the repository. Right. But I guess maybe that hasn't really happened for ARM yet. Uh, has it in terms of like a PR went and then some somebody realized it was broke, it broke something. Uh, I've never seen anybody complain. So, but okay. I don't know exactly who's using the night lease. Uh... Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, okay, this is an issue, but it's not a PR. I guess there must be some there, PRs. Yeah, there are PRs. Um, yeah, update output base of arts to inclusive. That one. Okay. Extra small, that's good. I cool. actually haven't looked at the PR yet, so I don't know. Mm-hmm. Okay. So is there something, any kind of determination we want uh, here or is this more uh, informational? It's more informational and uh, just, you know, we should probably provide them support as much as we can, but I, I don't know anything about Z390. So uh, mostly on their own from my perspective, but. Yep. We can provide them support and help on questions, et cetera. 
Yeah, so I can I can say that I've had experience being at IBM and trying to add uh, architecture support to upstream projects for various IBM architectures, and um, they definitely know what they're doing on the Arch side, and really just need a co community that's receptive to um, uh, you know to, to acknowledging this architecture exists and doing the small things that are needed to uh, to make that work. So. I think that's probably the all, all they really need from us. All right. So I, I think we should do that. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and basically treat them the same as the arm. Uh, you know. Sure. And... Yeah, it's great to see uh, people wanting to run our project on uh, new kinds of hardware. That's great. Yeah, I'm I'm sort of sort of confused though because our project isn't very useful without Kubevert. So maybe they're also looking at doing Kubevert on C three ninety. I don't know. It'd be a good question to ask in the issue. Um, like could that could they outline the use case? Uh, just so that we can help. I mean, maybe they're just trying to get the disk images onto the, uh onto the PVs and like we do quite a quite a good job at that and maybe they're taking it from there but I would be curious to understand yeah. the bigger picture yeah anyways I just noticed it so I just wanted to mention it here great okay uh so usually when um usually Alvaro walks us through the uh the issues in terms of where to start does anyone have any CDI issue that uh other than the ones that have been brought to uh, first class agenda items, any other ones that we should be looking at today? Uh, maybe we could quickly pop into the third one, the costume lifecycle hooks. Sure. Um, so, okay, somebody wants to use um, Linkerd service mesh and they want to not opt out of it. They want the importer to actually use it. And that requires mm -hmm. you to um, send a, a post request uh, when you shut down. Mm -hmm. And this is like a temporary solution until Kubernetes uh, makes uh, some feature, uh, can't can remember which one, until they make it uh, beta. So uh, since this is like very specific for the service mesh, uh, we came up with uh, with the suggestion to make the lifecycle hooks uh, customizable on the CDI CR. Mm -hmm. But uh, like I I don't see any issues with it. I just uh, I just want to get thoughts. I wonder. Would it <clears throat> would it be possible? So, like in Kubevert, they have um, sidecar hooks. Um, mm -hmm. Would some doing something like a sidecar hook in CDI make more sense? Because like this is very seems very specific to a particular use case. Is it over engineering to say that we want to support sidecar hooks, and then I guess the sidecar could just. Uh, run and wait around for the other uh, container to exit, right? And then do this, so, like you could implement I, it with a sidecar hook, right? I, I think the problem is this, the container isn't exiting and that's what this lifecycle hook is for, to tell the process to die. That's what the shutdown does. So I, I don't think a sidecar makes much sense for CDI. Uh, the, the sidecar mechanism in Kubert is to modify the uh, libvert XML, right? And we don't have any of that. So. That's one of the hook points, but I think you can, I have, that's the one that I, I'm most familiar with is the one that allows you to, um, yeah, to modify the XML, but I think there's hooks for all, like for multiple different uh, points. But you're, I mean, it's, yeah, I was just asking that because I was thinking like, to have this um, API surface added to uh, the CDI CR is a pretty big, like it's a it's a large, it opens up a large new window of things to support. 
Right. That's, um, that's a good point. So I'm just trying to think, is there a way that we can achieve this without uh, a big new API somehow or? Um... Well, we could suggest they uh, put in a, like a mutating web hook or something where they just inject a piece in that environment on a CDI importer pod. Yeah. I'm... There's there's trying. mechanisms to do it if they really want to, but yeah, I don't. I'm trying to avoid web hooks. I'm also trying to think of, um, in my mind, I'm thinking about this. So this is a. What happens when you want to do this in something like the uh, an environment that uses the HCO object? That means we're going to need an API up there if they want to use it in that environment. And that makes me shudder to think about having to put this, plumb this all the way up. Um, so is there a way that this can be somehow like automate? I'm trying to, I don't understand Linkerd enough to be authoritative here. So, um, but that's all I'm trying. I'm trying to think, is there a way to do this automatically in the presence of Linkerd um, instead of having to have it be a configuration step. I actually, I just noticed that uh, the description says it's going to this Kubernetes sidecar, uh, native sidecar feature is going to be in 128. So that's uh, pretty much now. So I'm confused, like, why is it, why is it not good enough? I mean, this would basically be a solution for one re Kubernetes release. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's coming. Looks like they're fixing it the right way. So yeah, like this is a, a really good uh, right there reason not to add because we'll support the API forever if we add it. And if it's only to get us through an alpha period, um, and like we've this, there's a workaround to disable the injection, but I don't know at what cost that has. Um, and not to mention, this is like, uh, you know, calling curl, which if we ever, you know, do like distro lists or scratch images, you know, it depends on executing a program that's in the container. So if you want to do something, it's not super extensible. If you want to do something that different, it may be require like building your own image, you know? Yeah, that's a good point as well. And, and if you're going through all of that, uh, I, I just looked up, there's a, a project called Apache Airflow, where you can sort of define rules that automatically inject stuff into pods before it ends up in the uh, Kubernetes API, where you mm -hmm. can put stuff like this. Um, okay. Yeah, so maybe you could add that suggestion into the into the issue um, yeah. that we should look at something because yeah, I really don't think a, a native uh, API on our side because all this. Yeah, it just it feels wrong. Okay, um, let's close this one and see, is there any other issues that you guys want to uh, dip into? We have a couple of minutes, otherwise we could end early. I see a rancher. That should be pretty simple. Um, yeah, they should. They wanted to give it a try themselves. Good. I uh, okay. pointed them at the docs. Great. Okay. Yeah, that's wonderful. It should be easy enough to do. Um, oh, the the wonderful uploading of a QCow two format file. Looks like you guys. Someone has already responded here.
Uh, yep. Okay, so maybe some good education there. All right, uh, anyone else want to look at another issue? Um, I can certainly browse these on my own time and not take you all along for the ride. But if there's any one that you, anyone feels needs discussion, we can uh, dip into it. Otherwise, I'm happy to uh, uh, end. I'll consult and see if anything was added to the agenda, which it is not. All right, I don't hear any strong uh, desire. So why don't we end here going once, twice, and gone. So thanks everyone for joining and I will see you guys back in two weeks. Have a great week. Thanks a lot. Thanks. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.